Hello dear friends, this is Dr. Sajadwani and the topic of today's video is the direct two principles of state policy or the DPSPs. Right? I will go step by step. Till now I have completed part 3 of the Constitution of India that's regarding the fundamental rights. Now we will deal with part 4 of the Constitution of India, the DPSPs. First, I will tell you about the sources of the constitution. As you all may be aware that the Indian constitution is known as the bag of borrowing. Sometimes it is called a patchwork. It is known to have derived various sources from different constitutions of India. Right? So, if I categorize the constitution of India in three parts, it won't be bad to say that the constitution of India, it has three aspects. One is the structural aspect. Second one is the political aspect and third one is the philosophical aspect, right? The structural aspect or the structural part of the Constitution of India, it has largely been derived from the Government of India Act of 1935. You may be aware of that. And the political aspect or the political part of the Indian Constitution that has largely been derived from the Constitution of United Kingdom right or great britain and the philosophical part of the constitution of india or the philosophical aspect of the constitution of india it has been derived from two different sources the philosophical aspect of the constitution of india or the philosophical part of the constitution of india it includes the fundamental rights and it includes the direct principles of state policies so the frs and the dpsps they form the philosophical aspect or the philosophical part of the constitution of india and as you are already aware about the fundamental rights that the frs they have been derived from the constitution of usa United States of America. While the direct principles of state policy or the DPSP is the concept has been derived from the Irish constitution or the constitution of Ireland. Right? So, the first point about the direct principles of state policy is that the direct principles of state policy along with the fundamental rights they form the philosophical aspect or the philosophical part of the constitution of India. And the direct principles of state policy they have been derived from the constitution of Ireland. Actually, the framers of the Indian constitution, they were highly impressed by the Irish movement or the Irish independence struggle. And because of they being very impressed about the Irish national movement, they derived the concept of direct principles of state policy from the Irish nationalist movement. And they put these direct principles of state policy in the constitution of India. But the constitution of Ireland, it itself derived the concept of the direct principles of state policy from the constitution of Spain. So indirectly, the Indian constitution, it has derived it from the constitution of Spain. But directly, the, constitution, the, the framers of the constitution, they derived the concept of DPSPs from the Irish nationalist movement. That is the from the constitution of Ireland. This you have to remember. This is the first point you must remember. Right? So, I told you about the philosophical aspect or the philosophical part of the Constitution of India. It constitutes, it is made up of the fundamental rights and the direct principles of state policy. And I have already told you that the fundamental rights concept has been derived from the Constitution of the United States. And the fundamental rights, I have told you in the previous lectures that the fundamental rights, they promote the ideal of the political democracy. I have told you that the democracy of India, the democracy, it has three aspects. One is the political aspect. The second is the social and the third is the economic aspect. So the political aspect of the democracy, it is achieved through the concept of the fundamental rights in the constitution of India, right? But the social and economic democracy, the aspect of the social and economic uh, democracy that is promoted by the ideal of direct principles of state policy. That means the fundamental rights, they promote the idea of the political democracy, while as the direct principles of state policy, they promote the idea of social and economic democracy this is the second point you have to remember that means the direct two principles of state policy or the dpsps since they promote the ideal of social and economic democracy and because you know that the political democracy without social and economic democracy that is meaningless that means they supplement the fundamental rights in achieving the goals of social and economic democracy that means they complete the concept of democracy in our country by promoting the social and economic democracy over the political democracy which is already achieved by the concept of fundamental rights that means they supplement the fundamental rights and in a way unlike fundamental rights because most of the fundamental rights they are negative in their approach while the direct principles of state policy they are affirmative there are some positive directions so that when you are uh, enjoying the political democracy the citizens of india they are happy they they are 
दे आर लिविंग इन ए वेलफेयर स्टेट राइट सो द डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी दे हेल्प इन प्रमोटिंग द सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक डेमोक्रेसी एंड इन दिस मैन दैट दे सप्लीमेंट द फंडामेंटल राइट क्लियर एंड दैट्स वाई द डायरेक्ट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी वाई दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे आर सीकिंग टू एस्टैब्लिश द वेलफेयर स्टेट यू मस्ट रिमेंबर दिस सो दे हेल्प the government to work for the welfare of the people the people who enjoy the political democracy they also are given the right they are also given an atmosphere to be happy right so the purpose of the directive principles of state policy is to seek and establish a welfare state and not a police state which was there before the independence of india right so as i already told you that the fundamental rights and the direct principles of state policy they form the philosophy of the constitution of india you must remember this sometimes it is also said that the fundamental rights and the direct principles because they form the philosophy or the foundation of the constitution of india they are also the soul of the constitution of india right and in fact granville austin in his book the indian constitution cornerstone of a nation he goes on to say that the fundamental rights and the direct to principles together they form the conscience of the constitution of india this is very important so according to granville austin in the book the indian constitution cornerstone of a nation he says that the fundamental rights and the direct to principles they together form the conscience of the constitution of india this is very important and according to br ambedkar br dr br ambedkar the father of indian constitution the chairman of the drafting committee he says that the fundamental rights and the direct uh, that the uh, direct principles of state policy they are like the instrument of instructions the instrument of instructions was contained in the uh, government of india act 1935 the government of india act 1945 gave a provision about the instrument of instructions and the instrument of instructions these were the instructions to the governor general and the governors of the colonies of india right so b r ambedkar says that the direct principles of state policy they are like the instrument of instructions the only difference is that the instrument of instructions that was directed towards the governor general and the governors of the colonies of india while these direct principles of state policy they are directed towards the state that means they are the instructions or directions to the executive and the legislature so dr b r ambedkar says that the direct principles of state policy they are like the instrument of instructions as contained in the government of india act 9 1935 dr b r ambedkar also says that that this is very important point and sometimes it is asked in various examinations that the direct principles of state policy they are considered as a novel feature so who said that dr b r ambedkar said that the direct principles of state policy they are the novel feature of the indian constitution although we derived them from the constitution of ireland they are regarded as a novel feature of the indian constitution court rulings in some rulings the supreme court of india that gave upper hand to the fundamental rights and then the parliament the parliament made ma many amendments which gave an upper hand to the direct principles of state policy the current view is that the fundamental rights they are superior to the direct principles of state policy but in the famous minerva mills case of 1980 the supreme court ruled that the constitution of india it is based on the bedrock of balance between the fundamental rights and the direct principles this is very important so the constitution of india as per supreme court is based on the bedrock of balance between the fundamental rights and the direct principles of state policy that means none has an authority over the other none is superior over the other right so in the famous minerva mills case of 1980 the supreme court of india it ruled that the constitution of india it is based on the bedrock of balance between the fundamental rights and the direct principles of state policy and this is very important this balance between the fundamental rights and the direct principles of state policy it forms an important aspect of the basic feature of the constitution of india that means the balance between the fundamental rights and the direct principles it forms a basic feature of the indian constitution so I, as, as i have already told you that the basic feature of the indian constitution it cannot be snatched by the parliament of india it cannot be taken away from the constitution even by means of a constitutional amendment act right so this is the importance of the direct principles of state policy along with the fundamental right so now we'll come to 
our topic that is the part four of the constitution of india direct to principles of state policy part four of the constitution of india it has been placed after part three part three is the fundamental rights which are the justiciable rights and part four is the non-justiciable direct to principles of state policy and part four it starts from article 36 to article 51 you must remember so it has been placed between the fundamental rights and the fundamental duties first you have the fundamental rights in part three of the constitution of india then you, you have the direct principles of state policy in part four of the and then you don't have part 5 you have part 4a that is the fundamental duties which were later on added by the 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 and which of course contains only one article that's article 51a so that direct to principles they have been placed between the fundamental rights in part 3 and the fundamental duties in part 4a right so um, let me tell you that uh, since the part 4 it starts from article 36 to article 51 but the list of the direct principles of state policy it starts from article 38 so article 36 and article 37 the article 36 it deals with the definition of the state and article 37 it deals with the nature and significance of the direct principles of state policy and the list of the direct principles of state policy it starts from article 38 and we have many amendments in direct principles of state policy which have added various articles and which has modified various articles right so the history of the direct principles of state policy as I already told you the concept has been derived from the Irish national movement and, and the constitution of Ireland uh, the constitutional advisor B. N. Rao as I, I have already discussed in the constituent assembly Sir B. N. Rao he was a constitutional advisor he proposed or he made a recommendation that we would have two types of we would have two types of rights in the constitution of India one the justiciable rights and the second is the non-justiciable rights the justiciable rights they were called the fundamental rights and the non-justiciable rights Rights, they were the direct principles of state policy as per dr b n rao so dr b n rao recommended the uh, formation of two types of fundamental rights or creation of two types of rights in the constitution of india first type of right was the non-justiciable rights and the second type of right was a justiciable right the justiciable rights they were the fundamental rights and they were placed in the part three and the non-justiciable rights they were the direct principles why were they non-justiciable because we didn't have the makers of the constitution they thought that the country doesn't have that much resources to make them justiciable and even they believed more on the public opinion than the remedial measures from the courts so as on the recommendations of dr sarbian rao the direct principles of state policy were placed separately as non-justiciable rights right so the direct principles of state policy they are the non-justiciable features in the indian constitution which promote which help us to seek the ideals of justice liberty equality and fraternity as mentioned in the preamble of india so the direct principles of state policy they are the non-justiciable rights they have been they are non-justiciable yet they help us to achieve the high ideals of the justice liberty equality fraternity as are mentioned in the preamble of india although they are non-justiciable yet they are fundamental in the governance of the country this is very important I will tell you since I told you that part 4 it has it is it starts from article 36 to article 51 but article 36 itself it deals with the definition of the state I have already told you the definition of state in pa part 3 of the constitution article 12 so article 36 defines the state as the same definition as given in article 12 i have told you the definition of state in article 12 in article 12 the state means the legislature at the central level the legislature at the state level the executive at the central level the executive at the state level the local authorities the local bodies and the public offices all are included in the state i have already told you in article 12 in part 3 of the constitution of india so article 12 defines the state for the uh, article 12 it defines the state uh, for a part 3 of the constitution of india while as article 36 it defines the state for part 4 of the constitution of india but the definition of the state is same so article 36 also says that the state means the central government the state government the central legislature that is the parliament the state legislatures that is the state legislative assemblies and legislative councils the local bodies the local authorities and even the public offices they all are included in the definition of the state so article 36 it also defines the state and then the article 37 it tells us about the nature and significance of the direct principles of state policy what is the nature of the direct principles of state policy that the direct principles of state policy they are the they are non-justiciable features they are non-justiciable since they are non-justiciable what is the fun of having direct principles of state policy 
although they are non justiciable yet they are fundamental in the governance of the country so, so article 37 tells you that the directive principles of state policy they are the non justiciable feature of the indian constitution yet they are fundamental in the governance of the country right so they are fundamental or they are basic in the governance of the country and it is said that these uh, direct principles of state policy they are regarded as the ideals they are regarded as the instructions or they are regarded as the recommendations of from, uh, from the constitution of india and it is the duty of the state to apply these recommendations while it makes laws this is very important so as per article 37 the Direct to principles of state policy, they are non justiciable features of Indian constitution, yet they are fundamental in the governance of the country. So, if you want to govern a country, the fundamental features you, you have to consult as the representative of the people is the direct to principles of state policy. So, the representatives of the people which the electorate has elected through various elections, these representatives they have to keep these things in mind while they are governing the country. And it is the duty of the state to apply these direct principles of state policy while making laws, while formulating the policies for the people of India. So this is very important. So the constitution says that the, it is the duty of the state. That means the state has to strive the state has to strive to inculcate the direct principles of state policy to take into consideration the direct principles of state policy to apply the direct principles of state policy even if the state doesn't have the means to achieve these so the state has to strive whether it is possible for the state or it is not possible for the state but the state has to strive to achieve these things to implement these things so it is the duty of the state what is the state the state means as i already told you in article 36 it means the judiciary it means the legislature it means the executive at the central level at the state level at the local level and all the public bodies even i will tell you that here the state also includes the judiciary this is very important because the definition of state in article 12 and article 36 it excludes the judiciary it also it only includes the legislature and the executive but here if you read in between the lines, it also includes judiciary. Why? Because the judiciary also has the duty to take into consideration the direct principles of state policy while deciding the cases. I will tell you later on. So, it is the duty of the state to apply these principles, the direct principles of state policy, while the state makes the policies or it makes laws and these direct principles of state policy they can be implemented through ordinary laws it is not it is not necessary that you will amend the constitution to implement these direct principles of state policy so if you want to implement these direct principles of state policy you have to enact ordinary laws right so what is the significance of whole of this what is the significance of the direct principles of state policy as i already told you that the direct principles of state policy they are the ideals which the state has to keep in its mind while the state makes the laws while the state formulates the policies so the direct principles of state policy they are the instructions from the constitution of india the constitution is instructing right the constitution is instructing the state right so they are the instructions from the constitution of india or they are the recommendations from the constitution of india actually which are of course non-binding actually they are not legally binding but they are the instructions from the supreme constitution of india as you all know that in india we have the constitution supreme we have the constitutional supremacy right the supreme constitution is instructing the state it is making re recommendations to the state or the direct principles of state policy they are the principles the, or they are the fundamental things or they are the ideals which the constitution is asking the state to do or asking the state to implement so they are the instructions or the recommendations from the constitution of india to the state that means the state has to take these things into consideration in its administrative matters in its uh, legislative matters right so in the administrative in the legislative in the executive matters the state has to take these things into mind keep these instructions or recommendations from the constitution in its mind while the state is formulating policies and making laws for the people of india so the direct principles of state policy although though they are non-justiciable if they are non-justiciable that means you cannot drag the executive you cannot drag the legislature to the court of law for non-implementation of direct principles of state policy so what is the fun of having direct principles of state policy the actual point is that the direct principles of state policy they are a moral and political obligation on our representatives that means 
देर इज अ मॉरल एंड पॉलिटिकल ऑब्लिगेशन ऑन द गवर्नमेंट राइट सो द गवर्नमेंट हैज टू कीप दीज थिंग्स इन टू इट्स माइंड एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैज टू मेक लॉज वाइल कीपिंग दीज डायरेक्ट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी इन इट्स माइंड एंड वेन द गवर्नमेंट इज इंप्लीमेंटिंग दीज डायरेक्ट वाइल द गवर्नमेंट इज फॉर्मुलेटिंग पॉलिसीज इट हैज टू इंप्लीमेंट दीज डायरेक्ट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी एंड इफ अ गवर्नमेंट इफ the legislature or executive fails to keep these things in mind fails to implement the direct principles of state policy while formulating policies while making laws then the representatives of the people the government it is answerable to the electorate which elected it so these direct principles of state policy they impose a moral and a political obligation on the government so a responsible government a democratic government which has been elected by the people which is answerable uh, to the people it must take these things the direct principles of state policy it must keep these things in mind while it makes the policies one more significance of the direct principles of state policy as i told you that since they are non justiciable yet it imposes a moral and a political obligation on the representatives of the people so what is the real force behind the direct principles of state policy it is the vox populi what is vox populi it is the voice of the people it is the public opinion right so if an electorate which is taking if uh, the representatives of the if a government if a government is taking the direct to principles of state policy very lightly if the government is not implementing the direct to principles of state policy then this government it has to face the electorate at the next election so the electorate may reject the government at the next election for it is non implementation of direct to principles of state policy so this is the real force behind the direct to principles of state policy so what is the real force the real force be behind the direct principles of state policy is the public opinion or vox populi the voice of people so a responsible government it it has the moral obligation it has the political obligation to implement the direct principles of state policy in its policies and in in making its laws because they are the direct principles they are the directions or they are the principles of the state policy the principles according to which the state has to formulate or make its policies right so the real force behind the direct principles of state policy is the public opinion or the voice of people and the government has to face the electorate at the next election if the government fa fails to implement these direct principles of state policy one more significance of the direct principles of state policy is that they ensure the continuity and the stability of the policies of the government they are a sort of common i can say they are a common political manifesto of all the parties let me tell you say we have one party ruling at this time and after 5 years we have a next party ruling so the political ideologies of the parties they vary sometimes the party is the leftist party the rightist party or the central party so the political ideologies the of the parties that varies from one party to other say in the first 5 years we have one party and the second 5 years we have other parties because their political ideology varies maybe their policies would also vary but the framers of the constitution they contemplated an idea that there must be in the independent india we would have a continuity or stability of the policies of or the programs of the government so the direct principles of state policy they act as a common political manifesto of no matter what the party is ruling at the center whether it is congress whether it is it is bjp it doesn't matter because the guidelines or the framework it is same so the direct principles of state policy they in a way they act as the guide the, they act as a philosopher uh, they act as a teacher to the governing party at the central or at the state so direct principles of state policy they ensure the continuity and stability of the policies of the government and they are also an important tool with the electorate and with the opposition because the opposition always questions the government for it is failure to implement the direct principles of state policy so if a government fails to impose if a government fails to implement the direct principles of state policy it has to be answerable to the opposition in the parliament in the legislature and it has also to be answerable to the electorate because the people will ask the people ask the government whether the government has implemented the direct principles of state policy or not so they are an important tool with both the electorate and the opposition in a democratic country and in fact the direct principles of state policy they are also useful to the judiciary as i already told you in order 
to determine the constitutional validity of certain laws the judiciary can use the judiciary uses the direct principle of state policy i have already told you under article 31c in part 3 of the constitution about the supremacy of some direct principles of state policy article 39 class b and c or some fundamental rights right so even the supreme even the supreme court it can say that a constitution that an act it is valid even if it is violating the uh, article 14 or article 19 because it is implementing some direct principles of state policy so in order to determine the constitutional validity of various laws the judiciary can use the direct principles of state policy so the direct principles of state policy they are also useful to the judiciary of india so this is all about the basics of the direct principles of state policy i hope you got the idea you got to understand the direct principles of state policy in part 4 of the constitution of india the main things which can be asked as mcqs are the origin of the direct principles of state policy along with the fundamental rights they form the philosophy of the constitution that's the very foundation or essence of the constitution they were derived from the constitution of ireland they promote the social and economic democracy they help to seek the welfare state they are present in part 4 of the constitution of india from article 36 to article 51 and let me tell you one more thing that the part 4 has been uh, amended by 42nd constitutional amendment act then 44 constitutional amendment act then 86th constitutional amendment act and then 97th constitutional amendment act that means part 4 of the constitution of india it has been amended four times one by the 42nd amendment then 44th amendment then 86th amendment and then 97th amendment most of the things were amended by the 42nd constitutional amendment act right and i told you that these direct principles of state policy they are non justiciable i told you that they have been regarded as the conscience of the indian constitution by granville austin they are like the instrument of instructions and they are the novel features according to dr b r ambedkar and i told you that the balance between the fundamental rights and direct principles it is the basic feature of the indian constitution right and i told you that they are the instructions or recommendations from the constitution to the state and they are the fundamental in the governance of the state. state and it is the duty of the state and the state has to strive to apply these or for the, or implement these while it making it makes its policies and it make and it enacts various laws so this is all about the basics of the direct principles of state policy and in the next classes we will discuss briefly about the various articles under part 4 of the constitution of india if you have any doubt kindly comment on the video in my youtube you know my channel genesis academy by dr sajad wani you can also subscribe my channel genesis academy by dr sajad wani you can follow me on facebook the page the name of the page is genesis academy thank you so much for watching this lecture have a nice day stay home and stay safe